Welcome back. Uh, I think last time we left off, we made it to 11Q. We had actually our first repetition, which was crazy. Um, so let's see if we can make our way to 10Q and maybe beyond today. Uh, we'll play 10 minute games as usual. Uh, I know this is the point at which pros will say that I'm using somebody as a voice setting, but I don't think that I have available a choice of voice settings. Maybe I do. If I do, somebody's got to point out to me how this works so I can actually make use of it. Because uh, that'd be cool. Oh, yeah, and recently I picked a cool avatar. So it might look different than one you've uh, seen me previously use. But it's just too cute. There's no way I could possibly pick any other avatar. <laughs> this reminds me of the Monty Python and the Holy Grail at the end where it just says intermission. And it has this animation that goes. And 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 it goes. Yep. Definitely reminds me of the Monty Python thing. Hmm. Well... What should we make of this? I mean, in some ways, this is kind of more cool than anything we could have hoped for. <laughs> oh, this is... The longer this goes on, the funnier it gets. I'm not sure if it gets even funnier if I actually do get a pairing, or if I don't get one. Hmm. This is beautiful. Man. You know, this would be funny if this goes for, like, a really long time, and I just make a video just of this, and release it, and uh, it gets, um, I don't know, people would actually watch this. I would. So, uh, I guess while that's going, I can actually flip open a Shogi book here. I have obtained. Yeah, it's it's mesmerizing. It really is. Um, I purchased a copy of Seven Don uh, Katagami Daisuke Sensei's um, Which Pieces Do You Need to Checkmate? And in this book, uh, the most fundamental forms of checkmate are covered in Chapter 1. And I'm still working my way through it, drilling chapter one over and over. Um, as I continue to drill it, I score better and better on chapter one. Although you would think any normal person, probably after the first or second attempt, would remember all the answers. Um, so, we'll try chapter one again while this is loading an opponent. So, problem one features a king on one one and a pawn on 1-3, and asks you which pieces do you need to mate with a king on 1-1 one, one, and a pawn on 1-3. Option A is a rook, option B is a gold, option C is a silver. I promise that's the only one I'm going to read out aloud, but yeah. I'll probably need to refresh here. All right, 
All right, I guess we could play some Shogi Wars today. Yeah. I was having fun with this, but yeah, let's actually try to play some Shogi Wars. There's also a cancel button, which is grayed out. Um, so yeah, let's reload the site. And try this again. Okay, so now the cancel button is illuminate. Oh, no, it's not anymore. All right, good luck. Third foul rook. Third foul or bust. All right. So I'm aiming to hit this pawn on their third file. And the way we do that is pushing this, they exchange pawns with us, and then we take this pawn over here. That's the plan. Unless I wimp out and do something else. Uh, actually, the plan's better if they don't have this bishop fork, but they couldn't have the... They've pinned this pawn on 4-4 to their bishop. I question the wisdom of this move. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. The button would get ghosted once you actually have a, an opponent, so you can't cancel out of the game. Um, something about the interface got confused. So we built half Mino. The king is journeying its way toward the death trap. Um, all right. Um, uh, yeah, let's build full Mino. Yo, welcome. All right. Um, so that being done, let's build a Mino that's stronger against attacks from the head. So we're going to build high Mino. And this way, I don't get pwned if bishops um, appear on this diagonal. Yeah, their bishop is defended by their knight, which is good for them. Um, so now they're trying to find somewhere constructive to put their silver general. Um... I have to remember that their king is over here, their silver is where their king should normally be. They're playing a central house castle. So um, I should not attack with reckless abandon like I usually do. Um, but should take some note of where their king is actually located before conspiring on something. So, yeah, they're attacking directly down this file, which is a smart thing to do. Um, that said, their king is a bit exposed in this situation. They have one pawn in hand. Oh, you remember that thing I promised I was interested in earlier? Should we actually... Sure, why not? Um, possibly better is just lifting my rook up two ranks instead of prompting them to strike my rook. Oh, hang on. If I take this pawn, silver takes rook. That's not so smart. Just kidding. Uh, so they had defended against this. I know my letters. Really, I do. All right, fine. We'll defend across the rank. It'll be okay, until it won't. But yeah, I can now play the rook in front of the king and try to hit this, but their bishop could easily defend this, but we could exchange bishops and then this drops. Um, uh, 
All right. Oh, okay. So the soft lock occurs when your potential opponent leaves immediately after being paired. Interesting. So yeah, there when a desync happens, that would be that circumstance. Uh, where they didn't even communicate to the site that they're leaving and they just left. Alright, our opponent is considering whether or not to exchange bishops. Because they're not considering moving the gold, uh, silver forward, because I just take it. They're not considering... Yeah, this is the one move they were thinking about. And I didn't know whether or not that's the right move, but it's the move they're thinking about as opposed to, I don't know, blocking the diagonal. But why would they do that? That's not their style. Their style is this aggressive thing. Um, when you've played enough chess, you try to map your opponent's state of mind. And my opponent's state of mind is that they enjoy attacking. And perhaps uh, defense takes a backseat to attacking. So, we're going to hit this pawn over here and see how they continue attacking. Um, now, I'm debating do I put a pawn in front of my gold to scare away the silver? Uh, Part of that depends on, can I unconditionally win this pawn and promote my rook? If there's no problems promoting the rook, then this intermezzo dropping the pawn here is fine. Otherwise, uh, well, probably none of this is going to matter if they just sack. Bishop takes gold, so they can continue attacking. But if you keep sacking, it gets harder and harder to keep things going. Oh, I missed this. That's clever. I should pay attention, shouldn't I? Uh, so this, um, this, their silver blocks their rook's influence. Um, I should drop back unless I see something better. Um, I should, I'm tempted to drop a pawn in front of their rook. But this is unwise. Their silver can't move through their pawn, so for the time being I am safe. When they invent a silver that can climb on top of the pawn and march its way in, that's when I'm in trouble. Um, but for now they'll have to open a second file for this silver to move, so that this pawn can get out of the way for their rook to or more likely, they move both the rook and try to use the silver some other way. But I get a turn to attack also. My rook is extending its influence already. Yes, they're trying to open this file too. Um, if we take this pawn, we hit the knight. Our rook is promoted. They have nothing in hand to oppose our rook. Um, it's interesting that they could continue attacking down the fourth file here, which is a bit scary, so perhaps I should put a different piece on the board. But I'm concerned I might accidentally hang some... Uh, we're not attacking the knight. The bishop defends the knight. My mistake. Um, but, yeah, if I could hit the bishop and force it to pick a diagonal that... Well, then it picks this one. But I think I'm fine. Um, or it could go back and defend the pawn, which would be super annoying. Hmm. But if I take the pawn, I can drop a bishop and chase the king. Um, uh, I think that's my best course of action. It's a little bit double-edged, but we need to activate our rook. Yeah. I prefer to make my own mistakes, though, so... Um, as cruel as it might seem, please don't make that commentary. 
um, So, yeah, I'm thinking of dropping a bishop somewhere. Um, well, if I could put a pawn right here in front of their rook, they have to do bishop takes. Um, that could get interesting. Yeah, what's so wrong with this? If they don't do bishop takes, I take their knight. Or, I mean, they could move the rook back to defend the knight, but this pawn is well placed. Uh, I'm in check. Um, man, it's so tempting to use my knight, but it's going to come back and haunt me. So gold takes us. Well, then they drop pawn on the gold's head, and I don't want to give up a gold. Actually, yeah, if I move the knight out, I'm attacking two pieces now. Um, so they have a choice of, do they want to continue attacking, which they probably do. Oh. Well, okay, I said they had two options. I'm mistaken, they have a third. Um, I don't like this option but it's possible. Um, okay, our rook is better back here than it was elsewhere. Uh, their king is defended for the moment. Um, man... Oh, I could skewer the rook to the bishop. Is that even my best move? I want to take this gold and checkmate them with the gold. Um, but if I put my bishop down here, they'll just block with the pawn. Something. <laughs> yeah, we'll defend my rook and try to disassemble their attack at the same time. Okay, they sacrifice their gold to continue attacking. I'm noticing a theme. Uh, we're in time pressure. Okay. Um... Hang on, if I put a bishop down, they can block it again. Nifu. Man, there's no super... Oh, I should just take their silver. No, it's not so clear. There's no obvious crushing move that I see just yet. This is both defending and attacking, so let's play it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I need the liberty to make my own mistakes here, though. But my threat of taking their gold here is a very strong threat. Um, in my opinion. 
1分30秒Won't distract the rook like you're suggesting, but this is mostly just to occupy the square. Um, now we have the silver in hand. They're going to chase my bishop. I'm going to chase the rook, but no, my bishop's actually valuable. Crap. This was not correct. Oh. Curious. Very curious. This does not help them. Mm. So yeah, if we can get their rook away from my king, that's so much the better. We have a mate in one threat. A rook drop next to the king would be mate. Normally you'd use a gold here, but I don't have a gold, so we'll use a rook. Right. We're not in check, therefore this is legal. Good game. Nice attempt. All right, we got another desync, guys. Either that or our opponent is heavily in the think tank, but to me that looks like checkmate. Um, so it looks like another desync. I guess we will refresh the page again. All right, let's try to play a second game. <laughs> yeah. It's, all right, good luck. This opponent is ranked 2 Don. This game might be different than the last one. Um, so just reading about this. Let's give it a try. Again, no hints from the audience, but this... Kind of, sort of, almost looks like my last teaching ladder game. Uh, so right before this set of games, we did the tiniest bit of analysis on what should be played in the event that this bishop exchange doesn't occur. And there was not a consensus. Um, so let's play this. Um... think this is playable. All right, we're going to build half Mino Castle. Um hmm. What do we do? I think this is still accurate here, actually. Um, all right, they've moved their bishop. I could force their knight to move, or king, but they're going to move the knight. Um, This is ill-advised, but let's do it. Um, the reason it's ill-advised is because I don't know this position super well. There's nothing wrong with the position per se, it's just I don't know this one that well. Um, I think we need to drop this back. Um... This is awkward. I'm 
I find myself immediately contradicting my other advice about this. So, um, yeah, where to put pressure now, I wonder. This might be a mistake. I might somehow accidentally be opening a hole. There we go. But yeah, bishop drops galore are scary. Um... On the bright side, their knight can't move anywhere right now. And I temporarily have stuff covered, but I am spooked. I don't know about you. My rook might be moving, but then I'm giving up the square. So maybe I need to move my knight instead of moving the rook. I've got everything just barely covered, but... Breaking in the center looks difficult. Um, yeah, they have similar thoughts to me, too. Okay, so... Nanafun. If we had a pawn, we'd try to hit this knight. Mm -hmm. I guess asserting control over 5-5 five five is not smart. Um, or rather, playing pawn 5-5 five five does not assert control over it. Um... So, yeah, we got squares covered. I think the next logical thing is to move my silver and hope that I can find somewhere to use it. Um, what is that? Oh, I see. They want to have their rook invade. Um, okay, we will kick the silver and have some exchanges here momentarily. This will get crazy. I think I have to take that. Hmm. Go <laughs> take this instead. I want to promote my rook. Promoting my rook is going to be bloody. I'm 
That's not smart. I'm not sure I understand their plan at this point. If their plan is to do Pawn Takes Pawn, I, I don't think it works. Because we've got a Pawn Drop. Oh, how many pawns do I have? Just one? That's okay. Still want to promote my rook. They deprive me of the ability to promote my rook. Um, Something. Oh, that's not good. What'll you give me for my rook? Will you give me a bishop for it? Sold. I'll take a bishop. Um. Nifun Sanjibio. I possibly should play a defensive move now and then, shouldn't I? Else I get in tremendous difficulties. Uh, yeah. That's huge blunder on my part to not play a single defensive move. This should have been played. It's too late now. Alright. Well, we'll see how we survive this. I panicked about the time. Yeah, this bishop drop is mistimed. Oh. Interesting. Puzzling. Um. They do want a bishop to attack with, don't they? We don't have a knight. Boom. 
Yeah, I'm panicking. Not sure what to do. Sanjubio. This is too slow. Oh, crap. All right. Oh, am I made it? I am made it. Didn't even see that. Well played. All right, let's play another game. So, yeah, even my rook takes uh, gold that I've been considering the longest time there also gets mated. So, good luck. Oh, we get Senta. Very exciting. Uh, hang on. I'm drawing a blank here. <laughs> Alright, we'll play third foul rook against central foul rook. That seems fun. Give my king somewhere to run when I need it. Sorry, I'm ignoring what you guys are saying, because I'm trying to check it, and every time I swing my head over to look at that, um, I get distracted by the next move. Uh, so, yeah, let's put the king over here. Um... They're intending something aggressive, so let's do something about that. Okay. That's interesting. Why would you just allow this to happen? Your silver that you want over here is not to be found. That's really weird. Um... And aggressive, I guess. Right, let's pin this silver to the bishop. So they have fully committed to keeping their king in the center. And I don't know how they attack from here. Um, okay, that's a way to start an attack. Um... Hmm. I guess we'll take it. And before things explode, uh, let's try to defend our king. Um, okay. Yeah, I see their obvious next move. So we're going to stop silver here. All right, and they defend. I ask them, please tell me where the silver is going. Actually, none of the options the silver have are good. Going forward drops the silver. Going backward drops the 5-5 five five pawn. And allows my bishop to spring to life. Um, so that's cool. Alright, let's go for it. We're hitting the lance now. Oh, right. Okay, I thought I was getting away with something tremendous here. They do have one defensive move here, and it's actually an important resource. I missed that. So move order did matter more than I thought. Got swept up in all this excitement. Um, that's my mistake. 
All right, I offer a bishop exchange that allows my pawn closer to your king. Uh, I allow you to promote your rook, I guess. Um, but I want your king. Yeah, the last... Well, this the last dude is 2 Don, this dude is 2Q. Um, he might be lulled into a sense of security by my extremely kawaii avatar. And that's not a strategy of mine, it's just... The, the avatar is too cute. You can't pick anything else. It's not allowed. Um, okay, pawn drop here is not legal. <laughs> so I guess we'll exchange bishops. Um, hmm. uh, this is confusing. All right, we'll put the rook somewhere better. Somewhere where I'm not going to drop the rook for nothing. I'll at least get a piece when I lose my rook. Um, but I do want to drop a pawn here. Because uh, this opens possibilities for all my other pieces. Mm -hmm. Alright, this is going to be confusing, but we'll play it anyway. So their king defends against both of my back rank silver drops. So I'm going to control 5-5 five, five, and 5-3 five, here instead, so that I can bring my rook back, and I don't know what's going to happen. But Oh, okay, they hit my knight. I was planning to bring the knight forward if something happened. But better yet, I can offer a bishop exchange than a rook exchange. Um, they're not required to do any of this, but... I sense that they might do it. Like, their bishop could promote the other direction instead of going into this madness. Um, okay. Could have seen that coming, couldn't I? Hmm. All right, fine, whatever. Wasn't using the rook anyway. Um. I guess we'll defend our king. Why not? Sure. Oh, that's a misclick. We are going to enjoy that one. Um, I don't want to take your silver. Um,
Hey, I never said I was taking the second silver. Never promised that. All right, we'll take it. Why not? Hmm. That rook could trap my bishop, couldn't it? Well, no, my bishop still has 5-5, five five, thankfully. Despite me being ridiculous, um, my bishop's not trapped. Let's take one of those. We stop Bishop 5-5 five five at all costs, which maybe should have happened last turn. Um... Maybe pawn 5-7, and then this would have been smarter. Right. Um. This is a fairly ridiculous way to activate my bishop, but um, not seeing anything better. Okay, you can have my silver, but I'm taking your rook. I should have taken this with check. Hang on. Before we put our heaviest piece on the board, let's try to remove the defenders next to their king. The heaviest piece is not the right one to start the attack with. In this case. All right. Um. Nifu. Check. Check. Thanks for the game. No? Okay, oh my goodness. That took a second. Alright. Well, that was exciting. Woo! We've made our way up to 9Q. Gotta celebrate that. Welcome, Spinal Tap. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm sure now that we've got both Transport and Spinal Tap here, I'm sure there will be some comments about what just transpired. Um, yeah. But yeah, we made it. That's exciting.
Um, so despite some technical issues, oh, okay, this does load. Good, good, good. Uh, for whatever reason, this board feels a lot tinier than the other board. Can I zoom this with control? No. A scroll wheel does not do anything to zoom the page. Uh, so you're on playing Senta. Uh, I think Spinal Tap caught most of this game. Uh, I forget. But yeah, I just built half Mino, later expanded to full Mino, got my Rook trapped, and uh, one on a misclick. So, um, I guess that's fortunate, eh? I think maybe they tilted after the misclick. Um, yeah, this is bad. I don't know how I could have played this better. This is a very curious shape that I'm sure they've played on this site quite a few times before. Um, and the trick to disassembling it is to attack one side or the other, but not both. And I don't know how to do this, but there's got to be some way. Maybe involving some edge file, and I don't know. But they've probably seen it all. So... Uh, rook takes here is the mistake. Although, like, pawn takes, I still get my rook trapped, so I can't feel too bad about it. I played it here because silver can't advance. To win this, they have to place down their other silver. But, yeah, nobody... Oh, pawn takes here, just... Yeah. If I take with the pawn here, they can't even win my rook at all. Okay, whatever. Um... Yeah, so I'm sure they tilted a bit. The rest of the game was not particularly accurate. I don't know if the beginning of this is good at all. Um, this really confused me, so maybe I should, I don't know, either keep playing this more and get less lucky and then feel motivated to study this a bit more. Or... I'm not sure how I do anything against this crazy castle. I could look up this player's previous games. That's what I could do. See what other opponents have tried against this. And then uh, use that. I was interested in this bishop pinning the silver to the bishop so I could maybe push this pawn. But they beat me to the punch. They took the 5-5 five five and 6-4 squares under control pretty quickly. This silver could just stop me from exploiting this pin. So I ran out of ideas. Um, completing my castle might not have been the right thing to do here. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll get paired uh, with this opponent again sometime. Maybe next time I'll pick Central File Rook against them. I don't know. That could be fun. Yeah, Central Rook and King Dynamo. And I'm sure you get stickers or something for certain castles and shapes, so who knows what they've collected. But that's pretty cool. Um, oh, I should check game number two. Is there a convenient way to do that from here? Um, so we can go to my page and take another look at game number two somehow. Or unless I'm on the wrong page. There's our playing style. Um... Defense is still very high in my playing style, which is crazy because after I build, like, the toughest castle ever, I just completely forget to defend my king. That's not a good thing. Um, but yeah, we've got defense, we have some endgame skill, but we got a ways to grow with all of that. Uh, we've got the results list, I think. That's... oh, game results. I don't know if those get to the same page. Yeah, here we are, 32 minutes ago. Here's game two we could see. Um, so here I am playing Gota. Yeah, we did a little... I did a little trying to find... I improvised this Rook 5-8, but... or 5-2. Um, but I did some research about this right before this uh, live stream here. I was looking on Play Shogi to see like what happens if they don't exchange the bishops. Um, couldn't find any consensus about how that normally goes. So we built half Mino and then 
I just, I was out of ideas here already. Um, a replay from the main page could also work. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I think I could have saved the gold. I, sorry, I haven't been following um, comments along with the timing of the stream very clearly. Uh, I am attempting to contribute to open source projects, and Lee Shogi is one of those. I have made some small patches, but I'm not the maintainer of Lee Shogi. Um, after he promotes the token here, I could have saved my gold. So after this here. Oh, wait. Is there a trick here? Huh? What could this be? Instead, I could have hit the rook. Keep going? Here? So you're thinking I could have dropped a pawn right here and then hit the rook with my silver or something? Instead of this, which gave up a tempo and ultimately lost my gold. Um, yeah, we're thinking I could just hit the rook with another pawn and then attack it by dropping a silver. Uh, but then they take this pawn, right? No, they don't take the pawn, I'm defending it. Oh my goodness. Right. So I could have gained an important tempo to save my gold. And then I'm just crushing. Um, yeah, that would have been a good thing to do. Or really what that would have forced is that when I drop my silver here, Rook takes and then Tokin takes gold. They've given up their Rook for two pieces. And um, I'm not going to lie, they'd probably still win that. I don't think I'm competent enough yet at checkmating to uh, defeat a Tudon, even with that kind of severely skewed material odd. Like, I don't think it's happening. Um, but it's interesting to note that that would have been another way this game could have gone. I guess after they take, I take the Rook, they take my gold, I push this pawn try to break this down, try to promote my rook before they trap it. Um, I still think, like, they probably would have somehow pulled it off. I don't... Wait, do I have the bishop also? No, they have a bishop in hand. My rook's not defended. Yeah. But that's a better way to go than just giving up this gold. Well, I'm not sure if it's better. The trade-off here is that I could trap their rook, which they sacked. So I think it, it comes out to the same thing. Um, well, not exactly. Here I have a promoted pawn. And the other line would have sacked a pawn, and my bishop would have been up one square. Um, and either way, it's still their turn here. Um... So I could have had my bishop up uh, closer to their king, which maybe would have been useful. Almost certainly would have been useful because this is vulnerable. But also maybe I should have just pushed this pawn here. Did I? Oh, they hit my rook. I exchange it for their bishop. And... Um, Maybe that was wrong, too, because that helps their token approach my castle. Which was not great. Um, the alternative, I guess, is running away with the rook. And then they... Oh, I was afraid they drop a silver here, but they don't. Yeah, just running away with the rook would be smarter. Um, not running upwards all prone and stuff. Although, I don't see a way they could immediately attack it. Um, yeah. I, th 
think this is my mistake. Anyway, uh, I think we can agree that I had a better position and somehow I blew it. And that if I just... Wait, how much time did I spend? I spent 40 seconds here and picked what's probably the worst move. Um, so, or not the worst, but picked a move that doesn't really help my position and helps my opponent's position. Yeah, that was not right. But that's why we play the games. We learn something every game. And we also learn by um, observing stronger players play. So yeah, seeing this token come over and smash my castle was very cleverly done. This bishop drop is clever that it prepares a silver drop and all that whole combination we just looked at. Um, like, there are other places they... Well, I'm sorry, there's not other places they could have put this. This is the only place that a bishop drop would have been immediately useful. And it took some recognition to see that winning a rook is useful even though like a bishop is probably better for checkmating my king at the moment, um, that this material gain comes with a free tempo. Uh, so it's worth pursuing for that reason, if no others. But um, yeah, I could have just run to 7-1, and it would have been trickier for them to find ways because now their bishop's in the way of their token, so they'd have to bring their pieces over slowly toward my king as I rapidly approach here. But there's a lot of pieces in the way of my attack. So it's complicated. Shogi's hard. But yeah, this is where we ultimately ended up, where I got mated and didn't even know it was checkmate. Uh, so that was cool. Yeah, I gotta practice, don't we all? Dear Sume, or you'll end up like this. <laughs> but yeah, it's a trio of interesting games today. That was good.